Hi, this is Rena from Quilt Israel, and we're here with another block in our quilt along. And this one is called the April Tulip. What I like about this block is that it uses a lot of stuff that we already know, like how to make four to time flying geese as well as strip sets. Um, one of the things that's new in this block is we're going to be working on an uneven nine patch as well as some uneven four patches. I know it looks complicated, but when you break it down, it's really an easy block to make. I hope you enjoy making it with me. Okay, here we are at the cutting table, but before we get into cutting fabric, I want to talk a little bit about the pattern. For this block, I was looking how to make an uneven nine patch. An uneven nine patch is a block that uses nine squares, but they're not all the same size. As my husband can tell you, I'm a sucker for tulips. When I saw the April tulip block as an option, I jumped on it. This block is really pretty, but I'm not really fond of doing what's known as Y seams. A Y seam is a seam that you can't sew straight from start to finish. You need to stop a quarter inch before the end and then do a turn. I don't particularly find that fun, so I'm trying to get rid of them as easy as I can. The original block has a bunch of Y seams. To make this block, I used electric quilt to redesign the block, but you don't need a computer program to do it. You can draw it all out on graph paper and do the math. I like using electric quilt because it does all the math for you. You can see here that I took out all the Y seams and I made them straight. No more tricky angles. Another cool thing about this block is that we get to use what we learned from the other blocks in the quilt along. We're going to make strip sets and we're going to make four to time flying geese. If you don't remember how to make them, don't worry. I'll leave links in the description box below as well as put cards up on the top of the video. Okay, so what we need to make this block from our background fabric are eight three and a half by two inch strips as well as one four and a quarter inch square. This square is what we're gonna be using for the four at a time flying geese. This is the main color for the geese. In the green, we need two strips that are eight inch by two inch, as well as four squares that are two by two. From the pink fabric, we need one strip that's eight by two inches. We also need to cut out the center square, which is a three and a half inch square. And we need four three and a half by two inch strips. And last but not least, from the jade, we need one strip that's eight inch by two inches. We need four strips that are three and a half inches by two inches. And we need four squares that are two and three eighths inch. These are the wings of our flying geese. So now that we have all our fabric cut out, it's time to pair it all together. What I'm going to start with here is I'm going to take my green strips and I'm going to pair them with one jade and one pink strip. I can also start pairing up my flying geese. I'm going to take the main color, which in this case is the background color, and I'm going to pair it with two out of four of the jade squares. And I'm just going to mark it across. I'm going to add a pin to each side. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be sewing a quarter inch on either side of the drawn line. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. Just to make sure nothing moves on me, I pinned each of the blocks. Um, I tried to pin it far enough away so the presser feet don't get in the way. If they do, I'll move them. I won't have to take them out while I'm sewing. Okay, my strip sets and my first part of my flying geese are sewn. I'm going to go and I'm going to cut these into the sizes of the pieces that I need. Okay, so now we're back at the cutting board and I'm just going to cut down the center of my four to time flying geese. And now I'm going to mark and add 
a square to each of the other corners of the flying geese. These are ready to be sewn and now it's time to cut the strip sets. If you want to cut the strip sets before you press, line up the ruler so that it's parallel to the line that you're sewing and then make your cut. Press all the seams away from the light green. This is so that when we go to sew them together, we'll be able to nest our seams. Now back in my sewing machine and ready to sew my four patches and my four time flying geese. The first stage in making our block are complete. I'm going to cut these open and I'm going to press these with an iron to finish off my four to time flying geese. Our pieces are all pressed and it's time to put our block together. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pair up four flying geese blocks with four of our background rectangles. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the four patch we made from our strip sets and we're going to pair it with one of the turquoise strips, a pink strip, and a green square. We're going to be making what's known as an uneven four patch. The only difference is, is that the pieces are different sizes. You'll notice here, sewing my blocks together, that I sewed the four patches in order. I sewed the longer halves and then I sewed the shorter halves, but I kept it all together throughout all four pieces. Everything is all in order and it's just easy sewing. Now I'm going to clip these apart, keeping the pairs together, and I'm going to press. And when I press, I'm going to press to the dark side. So I'm going to press to the turquoise and I'm going to press to the pink. This way I'll be able to nest my seams. Now that they're pressed, I'll nest the seams and sew them all together. Here we go, setting up our block to put it all together. The last thing we have to do is we need to add the extra white strip to the bottom of the flying geese. Okay, so let's do that next. When you're sewing blocks with points, it's a good idea to aim for what I call the crosshairs. That's the part where the two sew lines meet. So now it's time for pressing and here I'm going to press to the light instead of the dark. And the reason for that is, is that I want my seams to nest and I already pressed to the dark for the turquoise. And there's a second reason. The second reason is that 
As you can see here, this has two seams to no seams. And I always like to press to the side that has the fewer seams. Just like any other nine patch, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to work my way down and then I'm going to add on the other side. Once again, we're going to be aiming for the crosshairs. I'm happy with the way that looks. Now it's time to sew the rest of the blocks together. In order to see the points on the flying geese, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, instead of from top down, I'm going to work from bottom up. That way I can see the points on the geese so that I can make sure to hit the crosshairs when I get to them. The rows are complete, and now it's time to sew the columns together. All done with sewing and now it's time for a final press. The April Tulip block is the eighth block in our quilt along, meaning that we're halfway done with our blocks. If you found this video useful, please click the like button down below. And it'd be really great if you could subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos in the quilt along, please click over here. Thank you so much.